What if you can make anything that you can imagine all without spending any money or sending off your data to some online company? Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can generate images locally on your computer for free using Fucus. I'm super excited, I know you are too. All right, let's go. All right, the first thing that you wanna do is go over to the link that's gonna be in that description box, or you can Google Fucus and then end up on the GitHub page by Ilias Veal. When you scroll down, find the download section and depending on your operating system, you're gonna to wanna to select your operating system's download file. If you're using a Windows computer, you can go ahead and click right here to download. It's gonna open up a zip archive. And if you're on Linux or Mac, you can find the instructions there as well. So I'm going to save this to a folder here called Fucus and just hit save like that. Once you have Fucus downloaded, extract it and then open up the folder and run the run.bat file. This is going to open up your command prompt and instantly start downloading all of the models that it needs to generate images. So once Fucus has finished downloading all of the models, it's going to open up a browser window. And even though it's in the browser, it's not actually connected to the internet. This is actually just running on your computer and you can check that by seeing in the address up here at the top. By default, the settings are very basic and all you'll be able to do is type in a prompt here. But if you wanted to access some more advanced options, you just check on this advanced tab. Instantly, you'll have this window on the side here open up, which will give you more options such as your performance, your aspect ratios, the image number, which relates to how many images get generated when you hit the generate button, also your negative prompts. Another really cool feature of Fucus that makes it much better than some of the other tools available out there is that it has this style tab here which has a preview of each style that way if you wanted your image to come out with a specific style you don't have to be searching through specific keywords and figuring out what you exactly want and instead you can browse through here and have these nice thumbnail previews if you also wanted to combine some of these you can have multiple styles all going on at the same time so some of my favorites are actually the defaults here that are already checked, but Fucus Photograph is also really great to use as well as Fucus Cinematic, at least for my own styles. But once you guys start messing around with AI generated images, I'm sure you're gonna find some of the things that you like. Maybe some of these styles combined actually will produce whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Also, you'll see here that you have your models. By default, you'll have the Juggernaut XL model, or you may have another one. If you want to add additional models, go into the Fucus folder and under the models section, you'll see that there's a checkpoints, embeddings, impaints, LoRa's, and a whole bunch more so that you can fine tune the way that this generates images. Another awesome feature of it is that you can change the weighting options here, which also helps you refine your image. And then at the very end, we have the advanced tab, which is a very simple slider for controlling how much vividness and artistic creativity is gonna be applied, which just means how many details you wanna let the AI generate for you versus something that's very specific to your prompt. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. And just to make sure that this actually is running on your computer, you can give it something that Mid Journey for sure will not let you do. Princess Peach hissing Donkey Kong. You're gonna notice that I've actually capitalized the spelling for Princess Peach and Donkey Kong because I have noticed that when you do capitalize certain words and certain names specifically, it does help the AI understand what that is and that it is a proper noun versus just the donkey in this sense. We have all the settings set to default. I'm also going to add in an additional tag here of cinematic lighting, highly detailed, beautiful composition. And let's hit generate. Okay, so it has finished generating and these are the two results that it has come up with. This looks really great for such a simple prompt and this took roughly 30 seconds or so to generate. Now, if you wanted to fine tune any of these images, we can actually use it as its own input image. Let's say we wanna mess around with this photo here. I'm gonna download it. Let's give it a name DK1 because we're gonna keep editing this. So we have not only the upscale and variation options, we also have image prompt prompting, in painting, and describing. You can upload an image and it will describe the image for you. For this example, we're gonna be using in painting to see some of the things that we can change because I think most artists are gonna find that in painting is very similar to doing some of the compositing tricks that we used to do maybe in After Effects or in Photoshop. For example, let's say we wanted to have this during the winter time instead of this indoor warm interior setting. So over here, I'm just gonna select certain areas of the image that I think having maybe some snow on it will be helpful. And let's use this relatively liberally. 
Then over here in the method, I'm going to use the modify content section and let's add in the additional prompt, the snow during the winter exterior. And I'm also going to add this into the original prompt here as well. That way we really emphasize the snow aspect of it. And let's hit generate this time again. So this is the final result that we have from the in-painting feature. As you can see, it produces two results and each of these look like they're taken outside during the winter time. Another really cool feature about this is let's say we want to expand the rest of the frame. This is a technique that a lot of creatives I'm sure are going to love and find themselves using a lot. So in order to expand this frame, we can download this image and replug it back into the in paint option, except now we want to change the method from modifying details or changing some of the background. And instead, we're just going to select the left, right and bottom checkboxes. That way it expands the image to the left, to the right and to the bottom. So let's go ahead checkbox these and then we're going to go ahead and click generate again and this is the result that we get from out painting to the left right and bottom of the image as you can see we have much more details here to where we have the full arm the rest of the bodies of these characters and this looks like a really great result so i'm sure you guys are going to have a bunch of fun messing around with focus using all of these awesome ai features to really take your creative works to the next level if you guys enjoyed this video i'm pretty sure you're going to want to check out these really awesome ai tools here featured in this video we have one that even can clone your voice and a whole bunch more crazy stuff so go ahead check out that video anyways thanks for watching hope to catch you in the next one all right peace